This is the Zuzi Z70, our first robot vacuum on this channel ever. It's the top of the line model from the company, complete with the latest and greatest tech, LiDAR right at the top here. A crazy long runtime, quiet operation, tons of cleaning customizations, and even a mop. What more could you ask for? And if you didn't think you would ever need a robot vacuum, and I used to belong in that camp myself, then this review might just change your mind. Let's check it out right after these messages. And also, yes, don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you like it so far. That way. <laughs> So here it is, the Zuzi Z70 robot vacuum. And this is like the largest thing I've ever had in this studio, guys. So pardon the need for a different camera angle and setup compared to usual. I just wanna make sure that you can see this in good detail. But anyways, this runs $500, but it's currently 50% off on Amazon. The link is down below. I'm not sure how long that's gonna last, but you better hit it in case you end up interested in this. Now this vacuum, if you look at the retail price, puts it in the high end of the price scale. And that's partly due to this right here. This disc carries the LiDAR sensor or array. And this is part of the new crop of sensors that you can find on robot vax this is way more accurate and doesn't require your like the older vax that use cameras or regular ir sensors to bump its way around uh, to map itself in your house or if you have obstacles you have to put down strip tapes or boundary tape uh, just so they can read it but with this lidar it can sense it uh, along with 28 other different sensors in here i'm not even sure where they are exactly i'll show you some of them but when you combine the LiDAR, the sensors, and also its algorithm called SLAM, which is short for, I think, simultaneous localization and mapping, this thing can find its way around your house just in real time and know where everything is. Now, in terms of suction, this comes with 3,500 pascals of suction using a NIDAC and Mabuchi motor. And I did some research here. These two uh, brands are kind of mid-range. They're not low range at all. Mid-range in terms of brand cachet, if you know that kind of such. Now, the sucking power can be automatically variable, if you like, all the way from the max down to 1,000 it can do. And this depends on if you're vacuuming a flat surface like this or a rug or a carpet, or if you turn on ultra quiet mode, it sticks it at 1,000 and works from there, or if you want max power mode. Now, uh, where this lies, 3,500 pascals, you're wondering how strong the suction is. Well, in the realm of Robovax, the max I can find is 4,000, so this is pretty darn close. And I'll talk about performance and also how quiet this thing is in a bit. There's also a mopping function in case you're wondering. This has it. You swap out the dustbin right here with the water bin and you add a mopping pad at the back and then you're done. In terms of battery life, this thing can last me at least an hour and a half of full grid cleaning back and forth in my bottom floor, 1,100 square feet. And I know everybody is different, their house and layout and obstacles are different, but for me, that's pretty darn impressive. There's plenty of battery to spare when it's done. And even when it runs out, when I try to get it to clean multiple passes, multiple times just for fun, when it runs out of battery, it goes back to charge it. And when it's done, it resumes its work. Now, in terms of Wi-Fi, this has dual band support, 2.4 and 5 gigs. So if you move from a stronger part of the house to a weaker part of the house, it will automatically switch to 2.4, which is really helpful there. This, as you can see, comes in a traditional round shape. The new trend is D shaped so it can better clean corners, but you know, that's still emerging. I really like the pattern here that they have. Other robot vacs are just plain black or white or whatever. I don't like the shiny plastics though, they, because they scratch and smudge easily. Now the weight is uh, seven and a half pounds or around 3.4 kilograms. The box and other kind of uh, material literature I've seen, they say it's 14 pounds, but I think that's the whole box. I'm quite sure of that. This is only seven and a half pounds. Looking around the vacuum now, of course, we have the LiDAR module sitting tall and proud as we saw earlier. And by the way, if you're wondering, this is low enough to go under most of the furniture that you might own in your house. During my time of testing, I probably got it stuck maybe two to three times under some really low armchairs and that's about it. That's why we have some scratches at the top here. And speaking of getting stuck, in case you ever have to use this or stop this in an emergency or for whatever reason, you need to pause this away from your app, you can use it with, use the power button or the home button to send it home or stop it right in its tracks. And let me open the lid right here. There are some instructions here to show you some alternate functions to these. If you long press it or whatever, uh, then you can read up on it. Here's the reset light right there, the LED to show you they're resetting it correctly. Here's a cleaning tool, by the way, there's a brush as well as a cutting tool to cut hair off the brush itself. We saw this earlier, the dust chamber, and here's the water chamber. And by the way, you might be interested in this. Both of these, both of these chambers have uh, washable HEPA filters. Oh yes, really nice stuff. 
And in terms of capacity, they're not bad at all. Maybe in my 1100 square foot house, I can do probably a one and a half time cleaning before I need to swap them out. And that's pretty darn impressive all by itself. The front bumpers are right here. Uh, one of the sensors, or uh, one of the bigger sensors are the front here behind this mesh grill. These are not cameras, by the way, in case you're wondering, just for privacy reasons. Uh, and then there's a couple more sensors on the side. And here's the charging, the charging contact right at the back there. And I think this is the speaker and this is another filter. There's a replaceable filter right back here. Now let's look underneath here. There are more sensors all around. Let me come on focus. More sensors all around here, fall sensors and proximity sensors or whatnot. I don't know what they do, but it's all there. Here are some of the couple of the spindle brushes. They are replaceable. The Zuzi give, gives you a couple of uh, you know replacements. You're probably gonna need to replace them quite soon because when you go send these out for a test run, they're gonna get stuck somewhere in some high pile carpet or something you didn't foresee. So you know it's gonna mess it up like these brushes right here. Um, speaking of the wheels, by the way, looking right here, in case you're wondering about how high these things can go threshold wise from transitioning to carpet and whatnot, 2.5 centimeters height difference, guys. Really darn impressive. And I've seen this even go higher. And when it gets stuck by you, it's smart enough to back up and do a running start. <laughs> That's pretty darn cool. Um, so here's the roller brush right away. And if you take off, take off this cage, you can take off the brush and clean it out and also get this thing unclogged if you have to. Back here, there's a clip to for you to clip on. Let me see if I can show you this one. To clip on the mopping, mopping module right here. Let me see if it stays on. Yep, there you go. And this pad that comes with, with a replacement as well. Here's a quick look at the app you use to control, set up, and update the Z70. It's pretty basic stuff here. It's not as pretty as Roombas or Ufis in my opinion, but most things are located where they should be. And you're looking at the home screen here that gives you quick info about battery life left, run time, as well as area covered. And if you have everything already preset, like mapping and cleaning setup and such, clicking the clean button down here will just put the bot right to work. Now, if you want to control it with your default voice assistant, be sure to give it a unique name like I have at the top right here. Uh, that will make things a whole lot easier. Now, tapping the picture itself will take you to the more granular control screen where, for example, you can watch your Z70 create its initial mapping of your house for the first time. And for that, I definitely suggest that you supervise it and also the areas you want clean on the first couple of outings because you never know what can get snagged and what can get the robot caught and such. I wish there was better color contrast. That would be nice because as you can see here right at the top, um, yeah, text and icons on the right here, they, they tend to get lost on busier looking maps. So if you're zoomed in like that, it's just harder to see. I wish there was more, you know, just better design in that sense. Down here, the main controls, you press recharge to send your robot back uh, to the recharge station. On the map here, you can see the same icon. Uh, there it is right there sitting in the charging dock. I actually put it under my sofa, so it's well hidden along with the dock. Now, if you click more, is where you have a little bit more fun here. You can have spot clean, zone, and draw cleaning. These three just helps you to find specific places or identify places you want specifically to clean. Like here, I can draw. Uh, add a place that I can draw here, draw a circle, I can tell it to save and then clean that spot and it will do that. Now over here on smart partition, this is where I have segmentized my house into different rooms and you can create zones where you can clean. So I can choose say, hey, I want to clean that corner of the house and this corner of the house and then I'll send the bot on its way just to clean those couple of zones. That's really handy. Bottom two icons right here, virtual wall and restricted zone are what you use to create boundaries for your robot. Say if you don't want it to go downstairs to the basement or you want to keep it away from the dog pen to not freak out the dog or whatever, you can create a restricted zone for that or a virtual wall. So let me show you a virtual wall, wall real quick. So I have created here places where I don't want it to go. And on the map, it will show up as dark blue lines. Like here are cables that I want to keep it out of or from the bathroom that have like a lot of mats that will get stuck on and more cables back here. Flanking the right side of the screen here are some icons that you can barely tell is there, but if you click the middle one, you can load different maps that you have stored based on your cleaning history or clear the map altogether if you want to relearn the map or relearn a new floor. And by the way, this vacuum can store up to six different maps. So if your house has six floors or six different floor plans you want to you know, clean, this thing is good to go. Bottom right here are some cleaning options for the vacuum. Grayed out is actually for the mop, uh, but it's not activated right now, but it can control the drip speed there. And here is the cleaning grid style. Uh, fan speed or suction speed, you can go really quiet when everyone's sleeping or if you're cleaning nighttime or if you want to go full power for a lot of dirt in the mud room, for example. On the top right in this gear icon are some minor settings, firmware updates, consumable balance where you can see how much is left on your life for your side brush and such like that. 
and recommended change cycle. Cleaning schedule is what you can do here to set up cleaning schedules. And carpet boost is something I want you to turn on. I recommend that you turn on. So when the vacuum goes over your carpet, for example, a different pile, it will just up the speed based on what it thinks it needs. So that's pretty convenient. And here is where you can set up uh, or turn on smart partition uh, to do, you know, for the, to tell the vacuum to clean in a much smarter way, even though I don't know whether how <laughs> well that works. And I'll talk about that in a second. Some of the highlights of the Z70 are like suction strength, especially for its size. It's really nice and strong here. But that being said, if you do find your floor still not clean enough for you after it's done its pass, or for more stubborn areas like your mudroom, for example, you can command the Z70 to do this crisscross grid clean for more thorough clean. But even then, that would be nothing if this vac didn't have enough juice to clean even like one floor. Which brings me to total runtime. This thing is really awesome here. Any vacuum I say can, that can clean my convoluted downstairs space and yet have about 50% to spare is a win in my book. There's absolutely no battery anxiety here. Another strength is dual band Wi-Fi capability. 5 gigahertz for fast updates and map uploads and 2.4 if you need it for distance and reliability. So this thing not being relegated to the busy 2.4 gig channel when trying to connect with your phone, for example, like a lot of smart home devices do, is definitely a plus. This is often overlooked, but the inclusion of HEPA filters that capture allergens is like fantastic. It really does make your air seem fresher, like you're living right smack in the middle of a rainforest or something. I don't know about you guys, but I am mentally used to vacuums just being loud, no matter how well they advertise how quiet they are. So it's really awesome when the Z70 goes about its business at a nice calm like 48, 49 decibels in quiet mode. Max power mode is not bad either. It clocks in at 59 decibels if I remember correctly. And just for reference, traditional vacs usually come in at 70 or 80 dB. This thing has wheel travel like a Land Rover, I'll tell you what. I mean, there aren't many obstacles or thresholds or even feet that it can't traverse with this kind of axle articulation. It's pretty crazy. And speaking of off-roading, the Z70 sometimes has this annoying tendency to go off course from time to time. Or rather, more precisely, it suddenly thinks it's in another part of the house for some reason and then seemingly creates new rooms literally outside my house. Like right here, check out my latest add-on to my home, right in the middle of my driveway. It's weird and I don't know why, maybe Zuzi can say something about this. Zuzi, anything? Another negative is that some potential buyers might flinch at the high price of entry. I mean, 500 bucks is a couple hundred dollars more than the average on the market. And on top of that, we also have the brand name. I mean, is Zuzi even like legit? And honestly, and here I'm talking to you, Zuzi, it would have been so much easier to warm up to you if you had like a funny, memorable name like Nexigo. Remember those guys? Yes. But that being said, I looked at Zuzi's catalog and their product line is solid and very diverse. But still, it's sometimes it's all in the name, isn't it? One known kryptonite of the Z70 is the edges of high pile carpets. It works fine on them most of the time, let me get this straight. But when these spindles right here do get caught in them, oh boy, things do get messy and don't ask me how I know. This last one is minor, but when I ran the Cheerios test, I basically took a cup and dumped it on the ground on the rug in my mudroom, as you can see from the clip here, the vacuum left a few stragglers behind. Really, in the bigger scheme of things, it's actually not bad, but I thought I'll mention it anyway. Now, the next two are things I wish the vacuum had like right off the bat. And the first one is some kind of charging dock transponder or something like that built in. And what I mean here is because as it is, most robot vacuums, if not all, after they're done mapping out the house, which can honestly take one or two hours, so it's a pain in the butt. If you even think afterwards to move the charging dock somewhere else, even like a foot over, the captured map is rendered useless because the dock location is locked right into the mapping image. That's a huge downer and you have to do the whole mapping process all over again. Many of you owners of robot vacuums with indoor dogs know all too well the pain and horror of the smeared poop apocalypse. You know what I'm talking about. Imagine poop swirled right into your carpet all over the floors. And also, let's not talk about having to clean the vacuum afterwards. I mean, you might as well take it out back and burn it. So in short, some kind of poop detection ability like that on the brand new Roomba J7 Plus would be so welcome. So here are my final thoughts. My biggest hang up about the Z70 is the price. I mean, let's get this straight though. This is really an awesome vacuum with lots of capability, strong performance, both like in suction and battery life. It looks good, has the latest tech like LiDAR, tons of sensors, plenty of customizations, but yeah, the price, I mean, $500 retail puts it right against Roomba. 
But on the flip side, I am glad to report that the Zuzi, this one seems to go on major discounts more often than I can count. So if you can snag one of these for like 350 or less, I'll say you're golden. And right now this is 250 for crying out loud. And by the way, owning a robot vac doesn't mean you get to retire yourself from vacuuming duties, but it serves as a great, this thing serves as a great general cleaning device that you can run on any schedule you like. And then maybe go over the spots that you can access with your regular vacuum, like once a month or something. So with all that said, I want to give the Zuzi Z70 a gear score of 8.2 out of 10, like right here. And this is how I broke it down to get a final score. If you have any questions how I got there, feel free to comment down below. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this. And also thank you to Zuzi for sending me this unit to test out. And also, what do you think about my new setup? I have a new desk build and everything, really large workstation, new camera angles, lighting and everything. It's awesome. Oh, what? No, you don't think it's... Oh, well, that's too bad then. It's like $5,000 gone down the drain on my build here. Uh, what else can I say then? Remember to subscribe and like to this channel if you like what I'm doing. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subs and for some reason YouTube has been really, it's been challenging trying to get it to recognize my stuff and content and such. So help me out guys and share. Please share this with your friends and family and tell everybody you know about Gear Up. And also if you can visit my Patreon page down here, you can buy me a cup of coffee or tea or something or leave me a tip if you're financially able to help out. Remember to thumbs up if you like this video and comment nicely down below. And thumbs down, hmm. Thumbs down to sitting while presenting like this. It's more difficult than I thought. I used to stand, if you notice, I like to move around the screen from left to right. And this is kind of more restricting, like jumping from corner to corner is harder and the seat squeaks when you move. So it is a learning curve right there. You know who made this good? And it's not the YouTube influencers that you're used to. Paul Prudhomme. You remember that guy? I don't know if you've seen him. I, I'm used to chefs, like this guy is a Louisiana chef or something and he, he's on TV and I remember watching other chefs, you know, they normally cook standing up. This guy sits down. Yes, I've never seen some guy sitting down while he cooks. He has a burner right in front of him with ingredients. Check him out. Well, look at this clip right here. He's sitting down, presenting and everything and he's looking all cool. Wow. I Yeah, that's awesome. But anyways, um, that's all I got guys. Thank you so much for being here and remember to do something kind and loving for somebody in this world because the world needs it more than ever and it starts with you guys. So peace out. I love y'all and I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this this time because I'm so far away. But here we go. Adios muchachos.